during this holy season, it will be hard for me to ignore the spiritual warfare that all of us are now a part of. We are a part of a spiritual war that has been going on for a very long time. We are a part of it on a daily basis. Some of us, we go through some points on our journey where it feels like our prayers are going unanswered. All right, all right. Or it may feel like we aren't receiving any blessings from the Lord. Mm-hmm. Now, I want you to understand that this is the devil and part of his spiritual warfare, where the devil is trying to separate you, trying to separate all of us who are of genuine faith, trying to separate us from the love of God. However, because of this season, I want you to see, and I want you to know today that the love of God, it cannot be stopped. It cannot be stopped by anybody. It certainly, I tell you today, it cannot be stopped by the devil. Some of us may reach points on our journey where it'll become hard for us to even believe this because again, we may feel that our prayers are going unanswered and uh, we are not being blessed by the Lord. But again, I tell you today that I am of faith in the Lord, my God, and that God will do what he says he is going to do. To show you why I am so faithful in the Lord, let us once again consider the everlasting covenant Mm -hmm. that the Lord has made with all of us today. The covenant that the Lord made with mankind, again, it was confirmed in the giving of his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he summed it up perfectly when he said to Nicodemus that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Jesus, he saved us. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he delivered us from sin. He defeated our great adversary, the devil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Through Christ, a promise was made that we who have faith, we will be blessed by the Lord. who has promised to us that he will give us the desires of our hearts. Should we have faith? Should we trust in him? Now, as wonderful as all of that sounds, we know that the serpent of old, we know that that great dragon, that he stands in, opposition, total opposition against the Lord. Satan, he first waged war in heaven or was thrown out of heaven because of his wickedness. Satan's sin in heaven, it kicked off the war between what is wicked and what is righteous. From the moment the Lord placed Adam and Eve in the garden, Satan, he chose to continue to wage war against the Lord. In the garden, the devil went about encouraging Eve to disobey God. And again, I tell you that he did this for the purpose of trying to separate Adam and Eve, mankind, from the love of God. And when Adam and Eve ate from the tree, Satan, he succeeded in getting man to disobey God. And I suppose that you could say that this was a small victory. Mm -hmm. And I'm using air quotes there when I say victory for the devil. In this victory, I imagine that the devil, I imagine that he rejoiced. Believing that he had won the war between him and the Lord. You see, the devil, he probably believed that he had blocked God. That he had blocked God's grand desire to dwell with us, mankind, for all of eternity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
However, the one important lesson that we should learn from the garden, aside from the fact that we should not disobey the Lord, is the fact that the love of God, it cannot be stopped. You see, the Lord, he was not through with us just yet. God, he already had a plan in place to win us back. He already had a plan in place to restore us, mankind, unto the glory that he created us in. The Lord's plan, I want you to know today, was a plan that is of love. It's a plan that is of his mercy. It is a plan that is of forgiveness. This is, we know, because God could not destroy us there in the garden. We also know that God, he could have actually forced obedience from man in the garden, but the Lord chose not to do so. He has given to us, we've seen in my first series of sermons for this year, that he has given us the will, the free will, to choose him. So what better way to defeat Satan than showing him that love and faith can overcome all things, including him. So God, again, he made a promise. He made a promise to Satan. He made a promise to us. And he made a promise to himself that sin would be defeated. That the devil, that Satan would be defeated. That they would be defeated by the giving of his only begotten son who would bruise the serpent's head. Now, the one thing that scripture actually shows us as well is that when the devil heard this promise from the Lord, the devil, he did not take the premise of his defeat laying down. The devil, he chose to continue to wage war against God. But the Lord, on the other hand, he chose to continue to love us. He continued to love mankind and he showed mercy to Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Last week I asked, why does God love us? He loves us again because he is faithful to his nature. Mm -hmm. God is love. And in his nature, the Lord, he desires for us to be happy. In his nature, he desires for us to be content in our hearts. Jesus, he confirmed this thought for us when he taught us that whatever we ask in his name, it will be given to us Mm -hmm. so that God will be glorified. But Satan, scripture shows us, does not desire for the Lord to be happy. Nonetheless, for any of us who have chosen to believe, he don't want us, he don't want you to be happy. As I have already stated, the devil, he works to separate us from the love of God by trying to actually block us from God's love. Hear this today. The devil is waging war by trying to block you from the love of God. You see, the devil doesn't want you to believe that God loves you. I don't know if you get that today. The devil don't want you to think for one second that the Lord loves you. No greater illustration of this can be shown than when the devil tried to block God's promise of salvation. Now, many of us, we believe that the devil wanted Jesus to be crucified. But I tell you today that scripture actually shows us that the devil did everything that he could possibly do to try and prevent the offering of Jesus as our propitiation. Now, if you've never heard that before, if you don't understand what I mean by that, let me show you something today. To start off with, Scripture shows us that Satan tried to prevent Christ from ever being born. 
Now, if, if you think about this for a moment, if we go back to the days of Noah, scripture tells us that the wickedness of man was so great that the Lord was ready to destroy mankind. Man was so sinful in the way of the devil in his heart that the Lord was through. Scripture shows us that the Lord was ready to destroy mankind. Now, guess who would have rejoiced had the Lord destroyed mankind right then and there during the days of Noah? The devil. The devil would have danced had God destroyed mankind. Yet there was Noah and his family who found mercy in the eyes of God. And through them, mankind was saved. Now, if you're keeping track of the score here, the devil thought that he had defeated God in the garden, but God showed Adam and Eve mercy. Here, sin is in the hearts of man, and the Lord was ready to destroy man, but there was Noah, and man found mercy. Mankind was saved. And yet again, the devil thought that he had won, but he had lost. By my track of the score, it's two nothing God. Again, I tell you today that the love of God cannot be stopped. And the score again is the devil has a big fat zero in his column. I recently preached about how the children of Israel, they rejected God and his wonderful blessing of the land of promise. Mm -hmm. They rejected God's love. Right. Again, I want you to consider this. Who would have rejoiced? Right. Who do you suppose was in the hearts of those that were rejecting God's love? that rejected God's blessing of the promised land. I tell you today that it was Satan that was in their hearts and Satan would have rejoiced. Mm -hmm. Satan, he was attempting to, and it seemingly he was successful in separating those that rejected God's promise of the promised land. He seemingly separated them from the love of God. Mm -hmm. And, and, as I explained to you in this series, God, he could have destroyed Israel right then and there, which would have prevented the birth of Christ. But again, we are told in scripture that Moses, he interceded on the behalf of the children of Israel. Moses, he pointed out how not only would the children of Israel have been mocked by the enemies but the Lord would have been mocked as well. Mm -hmm. Satan, again, he would have rejoiced had the Lord carried out the destruction of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, God, he would have gone against his eternal covenant had he done so. Mm -hmm. He would have gone against the covenant that he had made with Abraham had he destroyed the children of Israel, God would have gone against what he had promised. But again, scripture shows us that the Lord relented and that the Lord, he showed them mercy and that he moved forward with the children of Israel. And yet again, I tell you that the influence of Satan was defeated yet again. The love of God, it cannot be stopped. When Satan could not get God to destroy the world, when he could not get God to destroy the children of Israel, mm -hmm. Scripture shows us that he took a more direct approach to prevent the coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. Let us consider how after hearing about the birth of Christ, Herod, mm -hmm. in great wickedness, he moved to put to death all of the baby boys that was two years and younger, he moved to put them to death. Now, 
who do you think was behind such wicked actions? None other than the devil. It was Satan. It was Satan all along. The devil was once again trying to block the love of God. And at this point, he was also trying to prevent his defeat. Because again, he knew that the only begotten son of God was his defeat. But again, we know that Jesus was not killed at that time. And by the time he was 30, Jesus, he was baptized and he was ready to begin his earthly ministry. So in all of these efforts thus far by the devil in trying to prevent the love of God, we have seen again that he's been unsuccessful. We have seen again that the love of God, it cannot be blocked. The love of God, it cannot be stopped. It cannot be stopped by anybody. It cannot be stopped, certainly not by the devil. Amen. Now, during his ministering years, Jesus, he taught and he preached the divine truth. He preached the divine truth while also performing many miracles, which, as we've seen in our Sunday school lesson today, it caused many people to repent. It caused many people to turn from their wicked ways and to turn to Christ. Yet while Jesus was doing these wonderful works, while he was preaching the truth and teaching the truth, as we saw in our Sunday school lesson this morning, there were the religious leaders who ironically claimed that the one sent from God was an agent of Beelzebub. That is the devil. That is Satan. Imagine that. The one sent from God, the only begotten son, was in the world healing the world. Healing us. Physically and spiritually, Jesus was doing the Father's works. He was doing good. He was preaching. He was teaching the divine truth and the religious leaders was saying, nah, uh don't listen to this guy. Uh-uh, don't follow this guy. This guy is an agent of the devil. I ask you again today, who do you suppose is in the hearts of those religious leaders? Again, it was the devil. It was Satan all alone. The devil, I want you to understand, was trying to keep the divine truth away from us. Because again, he was trying to block the love of God from reaching us. Again, do you think the devil was successful in stopping the love of God? The devil was trying to keep God's blessing of eternal life. He was trying to keep it away from us. The devil was trying to prevent the Holy Spirit from dwelling in all of us. He did not want us to think for one second that God loved us. And again, I ask you today, do you believe that the devil was successful? Well, here's a hint for you. Oh, oh, y'all saying no. So y'all don't know. Y'all don't need the hint. But for those that may watch and for those that may listen, The hint for you today is that we're still standing here. Not only are we still standing here today, we are of faith in the Lord today. We have received the truth. So before I even go any further, I would already tell you that the devil has lost. In our scripture today, Jesus, he spoke to the disciples about how he must go to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. We see there in the 21st verse there, he said that he must go to Jerusalem, that he must suffer many things from those same religious leaders, that he must then be killed and that he would then be raised the third day. Now, this was the first time that Jesus had predicted his death to the disciples and 
this prediction to the disciples, it, it caught them off guard. They weren't expecting to hear this. And we'll see Peter there in the 22nd verse. He, 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 he stands up here and Peter, he, he objects. Peter, he even rebukes this truth from Jesus. We'll see Peter, he said there, this shall not, it cannot happen to you. You see, in Peter's mind, the Messiah could not be defeated. In Peter's mind, the Messiah could not be destroyed. Have a take a look at my key verse there. And we will see an adamant response from Jesus here. Where Jesus, he says to Peter, he says, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Now, now some of us, we will look at Jesus's response to Peter and we say, oh man, Pete, Jesus was being awfully harsh to Peter. Peter just didn't want Jesus to die. What's wrong with that is what some of us will say. But again, I ask you to consider this. Who do you suppose had entered into the heart of Peter and influenced Peter to say this to Jesus? Who do you suppose was trying to prevent Jesus from going to the cross? Now, why Peter may have thought that he was saying words from a loving place. I tell you today that he was under the influence of the devil. Peter, he had just said moments earlier in the 16th verse through the influence of the Holy Spirit that Jesus was the son of the living God. Yeah, yeah. But look how swiftly things change here mm -hmm. to where he's under the influence of Satan who again desired to prevent the work of Christ, which we again know is a work that was of love. You see, this is how the devil operates. This is how the devil wages war today. This is how the devil does battle against God. He tries to influence you. He tries to influence you to move against the works of God. Because again, when you move against the works of God, you cross that unpardonable line and you better believe that the devil knows that that is why he tries to influence you to move against the works of the Lord our God let us remember that Jesus taught that he was sent not to condemn the world but to save the world and that was only one way that Jesus would save the world he had to go to Jerusalem and he had to be offered up for us. Just like during the days of Noah, God could have destroyed us, but he loved us and he showed us mercy by giving us his only begotten son to be offered up. What a wonderful blessing Jesus Christ is. But the devil was trying to block our blessing. You see, we are blessed today because of Jesus. We are blessed today because Jesus, he chose to be obedient and he chose to drink from the cup that was before him. You see, Jesus, he didn't have to drink from that cup. He didn't have to drink from the bitter cup of death, but he committed himself to do the father's will. And we should be grateful. We should be thankful for that. Because in doing the Father's will, we see yet again that the devil was defeated. Let me tell you something today about the love of God. And I've already shared it with you. I've already expressed it to you. If you haven't caught it before, I'll say it to you again. The love of God, it cannot be stopped. It cannot be stopped because the Lord's love for us, it is great. I want you to hear today that the love of God, it cannot be stopped because the Lord loves you and God's love for you. It is great. Yeah. 
I believe we need to hear that today. Because again, on our journey, some of us, we think that our prayers go unanswered. Some of us, we think that our blessings are not being received, that God is not giving them to us. But again, I tell you today, don't think that way because the Lord's love for you, it is great. You see, the devil can try to withstand your blessings from God, but as Christ committed himself to the Father's will, mm -hmm. the Lord has committed himself to you. Oh, yeah. 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 Now, I want to take you back a bit here. Mm -hmm. I want to give some history here. Because, again, some of us may think that our prayers go unanswered. Come on. And since I've been talking about spiritual warfare, I want to take you back to the book of Daniel. In the book of Daniel, the lid is blown off of the cover of the spiritual warfare that we are under today, that the devil is waging against the Lord. And we'll find what is happening, the reality of what is happening all around us. Daniel, as we know, he was a man of tremendous faith during some very dark times for the Jews. The, yeah. The Jews, they were living in Babylon in exile after they were conquered by the Babylonians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we are told in the 10th chapter of Daniel, if you want to turn over and you want to look at the 10th chapter of Daniel, you, you can. We're told in the first and in the second verse of Daniel that Daniel for three weeks was in a great amount of grief and mourning. He was probably mourning the fact that the return to Jerusalem for the Jews was moving along very slowly. Right. Only a few had returned at that point in time. And we're told that in the third verse, in the 10th chapter of Daniel, that during this time of mourning for three weeks, Daniel didn't eat any pleasant food or drink wine. Daniel, he states that he had not anointed himself at all until the three weeks were fulfilled. So I would say to all of you that Daniel was going through some things. You know, we talk about trials and, and having tribulation. Daniel, he was in need of some serious help. And, you know, when you're going through trials and when you're going through tribulation and when you are in need of some serious help, what do you do? Well, what I do is I go to the Lord and, and I pray. And I imagine that all of you do the same when you are being afflicted, when you are having great struggles and troubles and, and the burdens are becoming too heavy for you to bear. I imagine that you get down on bent knee and that you pray to the Lord. Well, that is exactly what Daniel did. Daniel was a prayerful man. So we're told that in the fourth through the ninth verse that on the 24th day of the first month, Daniel, he had a visit from a certain man. Now, if you look at the description of the certain man there, you'll find that the man's appearance is very similar to the son of man, that is, Jesus Christ, as John saw him in heaven in the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, the first chapter, 14 verse, we see the post-resurrected Jesus Christ in all of his glory. So Daniel was visited not by the pre-incarnate Christ, mm -hmm. but by the post-resurrected Christ. Well. Yeah, because of his physical condition, right. Daniel tells us that, that when Christ began to speak to him, that he passed out, mm -hmm. that he fell face first on the ground. And in the 10th and the 11th verse, Daniel tells us that he was touched suddenly and that he was helped to his feet by another. 
the one that had helped Daniel to his feet said to him that he was sent to Daniel by the Lord to minister to him to answer a prayer that Daniel had prayed. Mm-hmm. Would you understand that this was an angel that was ministering to Daniel and that helped Daniel up to his feet? Mm-hmm. This angel had an answer to the prayer that Daniel had prayed. You see, this is the role of angels. We are told in scripture that angels are ministering spirits that tend to administer to those who will inherit salvation. Did you hear that? Angels, they, they tend to, and they minister to all of those who are of genuine faith. The old folks, they didn't have it wrong when they said that there's always an angel on your shoulder. It is always an angel by your side. They didn't have that wrong. All right. So the angel, we should understand, was again, he was there for Daniel to tend to, to minister to, to answer Daniel's prayer. Mm-hmm. However, we'll see here in the scripture that the angel, before giving Daniel the answer to his prayer, the angel began to reveal some very disturbing news that again gives us insight to the spiritual warfare that is still being waged today. The angel said there in the 13th verse, look at it closely. The angel said to Daniel that it was sent to him the first moments that Daniel prayed to the Lord. However, the angel says that it was withstood, that it was blocked, that it was prevented for 21 days from reaching Daniel. So who do you think was blocking the angel, was withstanding the angel, was preventing the angel from reaching Daniel? From reaching Daniel to attend to him, to minister to him, to give him an answer, and even a message that Daniel wasn't even able to hear because he passed out when Jesus had a message for him. Mm -hmm. I tell you again, it was none other than Satan. It was none other than the devil Mm -hmm. that was withstanding the angel from ministering to, to tending to Daniel. Again, the devil there, he was trying to block God from Daniel, his, his servant there. This is the devil and his desire. Again, the devil wants to separate us from the love of God. And he will go through anything and everything to do so. The devil, he will attempt to hinder you in your prayer life just as he did with Daniel. Because the devil knows that our prayer life, it is of great significance and importance. It is our one line of communication with the Lord. And if there's anything that the devil desires is he wants you to believe that God can't hear you. Think about how many people around us today are out there saying that prayer don't work. And guess who has influenced them to believe that, that lie? None other than Satan. Again, the devil don't want you to believe for one second that God can hear your prayers. The devil don't want you to believe for one second that God loves you. Mm -hmm. I want to show you again today that even though the devil thinks that he can block God's answers, I want you to, I want you to see again today that the devil cannot stop the love of of God. Though the devil withstood the angel for 21 days, we see there in that 13th verse that the angel is there. The angel is there tending to Daniel. The angel is there ready to minister to Daniel. The angel is there ready to give Daniel the message that Christ was trying to share with Daniel before he passed out. The angel is there to answer Daniel's prayers. 
How did the angel get there? We'll see it there again in the 13th verse. The angel reached Daniel because, again, the love of God cannot be stopped. And in this love, we'll see there that Michael, the archangel, was sent to help clear the way for the angel so that the angel could reach the ears of Daniel. So that the angel could minister to, so that the angel could tend to Daniel. Mm -hmm. The devil and his forces, his army, was yet again defeated by Michael, who had threw him out of heaven. And the devil and his forces, they were defeated yet again by the Lord. I don't know about all of you, but I done lost count now. I have lost count now about how many times the devil done been defeated Mm -hmm. by the Lord. Mm -hmm. He's been defeated yet again, over and over and over again. Every time that we step out on faith, I want you to understand that that's another loss for the devil. Because the devil don't want you to have faith. But yeah, here we are still standing here today. Because again, God has been so good to us. God has answered all of our prayers. The Lord has guided us on our journey. The Lord has shielded and protected us on our journey. The Lord has supplied our every need. He's been defeated over and over and over again. The devil has been defeated. After having predicted his death three times, scripture tells us that Lazarus, Jesus's friend, became gravely sick and died. And so Jesus, he said to the disciples in the 11th chapter that he needed to go to Judea to see his friend, to to wake his friend up. He needed to go to Bethany, which sat just outside of Jerusalem. It was walking distance away from Jerusalem. And and when Jesus had said this, the disciples, they grew very fearful and and very troubled. And scripture says that they said to Jesus, Rabbi, lately the Jews, they've sought to stone you. And they asked you, you're trying to go there again? They were trying to prevent Jesus from going to Jerusalem on that final week that he went to Jerusalem. They was trying to prevent Jesus from going to the cross. They was trying to prevent Jesus from offering himself up. They were trying to prevent Jesus from fulfilling God's everlasting covenant. The promise that he has made to all of us in the fact that sin would be defeated and that Satan would be defeated. And again, I ask you, who do you suppose was trying to make that last ditch effort from keeping Jesus to going to Jerusalem? It was none other than the devil. It was none other than Satan. Yes, these words from the disciples, they were sharing out of love and care for Jesus yet again. But Jesus, he had an oath, he had a promise, he had a vow that he needed to fulfill. And the devil, he was trying to keep Jesus from fulfilling that oath, that vow, that promise that he had made to us. Because again, Satan knew that the cross is sealed his defeat. Satan, he knew that the cross is sealed God's love for us, mankind. Not only did the cross seal that, but the cross sealed our salvation. The cross is sealed God's everlasting covenant that he made with us and the devil was trying to block all of it off from us. Now, again, you may have never looked at this this way before, but the devil at this point was literally pleading. He was literally begging Jesus to stop. Stop, stop, stop. Is what the devil was doing. This ain't the first time that we have seen the devil have to beg God and plead God. He did it when he had, when he wanted to challenge Job. 
He had to beg and plead. And here he is begging and pleading for his life. But I want you to hear what Jesus said there. Jesus, with the wit that I can understand, he said to his disciples, are there not 12 hours in a day? You better believe it is. 12 hours on one side, 12 hours on the other side, 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of a night. Just as sure as that, Jesus was saying, in other words, I have work to do. You're not going to stop me. Nobody is going to stop me. Satan, I see you there. I know that's you. You're not going to stop me. Again, the love of God, it cannot be stopped. Jesus, he committed himself for all of us. To the Romans, Paul wrote, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our love, our Lord. I tell you today, I'm persuaded of the same thing. There ain't nothing. And yes, I said ain't. There ain't nothing that can separate me from the love of God. And I believe that is the case for you, all of you who are of genuine faith today. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. There is nothing that can prevent us from his love. There is nothing that can block us from his love because God will tear down. God will not down all obstacles that tries to stand in between us and him because that's the love that the Lord has for all of us. Christ again is our confirmation that the love of God cannot be stopped. God, he never gives up on us. And I tell you today that we should never give up on him. He is faithful to his nature. We ought to in return be faithful to him. You see, the moment that we give up on the Lord is the moment when the devil succeeds in separating us. That is not the devil beating God. That is the devil beating us. You see, the devil is fully capable of defeating us when we try to go at things by our own power and by our own might. Yet when we lean on the Lord, we are unbeatable because God is unbeatable. God cannot be stopped. So I encourage you today to trust in the Lord, to depend on him, to have faith in him. And in him, we will overcome that old serpent of old. We will overcome that great dragon. We will overcome Satan. We will overcome sin. We will overcome this world. In our home, we will inherit in the heavenly kingdom of the Lord our God. Amen. 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 Amen.